Hello and welcome to another video here in our Power Query series. In this one, we're gonna take a quick look at working with dates. Specifically, maybe you've had some problems converting dates and getting the date to actually be a date. You see, I have an error on the screen. We're gonna take a look at that. The other thing I wanna talk about in this video is how to use the UI, not write code, to take a date column like a birthday and convert it into an age column all the way back in the Power Query Editor, which is a best practice instead of doing it in DAX. So those are the things that we're gonna take a look at in this quick video. So let's jump right in and let's do it. Before we begin, do you wanna learn more about DAX or Microsoft Fabric? You can go to prag.works forward slash Mitchell40 and save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription to over 100 classes. Now, on to our video. The first thing I wanna tackle is I'm inside the Power Query Editor and we have an error here. So let me kind of take this back real quick. I'm gonna open up the formula bar and I'm gonna change this column back to a text field so you can see how the data came in. So we'll change it back to a text. And this is how the data came in. A lot of times when you're pulling data from a CSV file, you're pulling data from an Excel file, it'll look something like this. And if you try to convert this directly to a date from right here, it will not work. Watch. So I am going to click right here and I'm gonna convert this to a date. So I'll click there. I'm gonna tell I wanna make it a date. Now we're gonna get prompted. Do I wanna replace current or add new step? And all that's saying is that, hey, we just did a change data type step, which that, by the way, we didn't do it. The Power Query Editor does that automatically when you first load data. So it says, hey, we noticed that the very last step in this entire applied step was a change type. Do you wanna replace what was done in that step or do you wanna add a new step? It doesn't matter which way we go here, either way is gonna fail. So we're gonna go with add new step so you can just see it. So we'll do add new step and we get an error message. What in the world? Now, what Power BI actually did when it first pulled the data in is it actually changed my text field to a date time. So let's delete this step real quick and if I go back over here, and I'll zoom in on this one, I'm gonna change this back to a date time real quick. So I'm gonna change this back to a date time data type. We'll zoom over to the right. You'll notice we're back here, and our last step is right back where we were. Now, if I change this to a date, and this is the proper procedure, if you bring in a field and the field is a text field, you need to convert it to a date time, and then you need to convert it to a date. But I'm still gonna get an error message here. So I'm gonna click date. And this is where I can really make a mistake here. So what I'm gonna do is say, I want to replace current. If I replace current, that means it never got converted to a date time. So I never did that step. And that's really not what we wanna do, but watch what happens if I do replace current. If I do replace current, again, we get this error message. And the error message is telling me it cannot parse that input value as a date. It can't do it. So let's fix this one last time and just talk about the final step here. So we're gonna turn this back into a date time. So it comes in as a string, as really an any value. Power BI says, hey, I'm gonna convert that to a date time. So it does that, that works. You can take a text value that's a date time and turn it into a date time. So now you see that it works. When I go over here to convert this to a date, what I wanna do is say add new step. It's very imperative that you add it as a new step so you don't lose that intermediary step of converting it to a date time. And that's it. And I see this problem all the time, all the time. People struggle with this when they're trying to change a date time into a date. So make sure to add it as a new step. And there you go. Now, you would have been lucky here if I were to delete this step. If, if you had done something in here, if you had made any move that applied a new step, and then you came over here and you said, change it to a date now. Because the prior step was not change type, the prior step is gonna be this reordered column step. It won't give you the whole replace. It just adds it as a new step. So that's gonna work, no problem. So maybe you've gotten away with that and not even realized why, but now you know, hey, I gotta convert it to a date time first, and then I have to convert it to a date as a new step to make that work. Now that was tip number one. What I wanna show you is what we can do in the UI as far as creating a customer age or any kind of difference type of calculation inside of the Power Query Editor without having to dive into the Elm language. 
So what I would do is go over to my customer table and on the customer table, we have a column here and the column is birth date right here. And so what we want to do is we want to be able to put all of our customers into different age buckets so that we can get information on that. We can make analytical business driven decisions, right? Or data driven decisions for the business by saying, show me my profit margin for customers that fall within this bucket, 45 to 54. Show me my profit margin for customers that fall in this bucket. Show me what brands we sell across different age demographics, right? Very, very common to want to do that. Now, if I wanted to do this type of calculation in DAX, this would take me all of about 20 seconds, right? If that, but to do it in ELM, I don't really know the ELM functions, right? So I'd have to go look it up. I'd have to go out to the web and Google it, go on YouTube, or I would come in here and create a new blank query and I'd use the whole hashtag shared keyword to get a list of all the functions and I'd have to figure it out. And I've had to do that for a lot of different things over the years working with ELM. And so sometimes we will shortcut and say, hey, we're gonna use DAX instead of ELM because we're more familiar with it. And I'm sure that's generally the case for most people. But we know if you've followed us here at Pragmatic Works, you know that it's a best practice to build those columns back in the Power Query Editor because that happens before all the compression algorithms are run by Power BI. And there's a couple of benefits there, but one is it's gonna give you better storage in your model, which means you can load more data in your model. That's always a good thing. So how am I gonna do this? Well, let me show you. I'm gonna select the birth date column. Then I'm gonna go up to the very top and I'm gonna say add column. Now there's quite a few things under add column, but what we're gonna be spe specifically kind of looking at is date for now. And then we're gonna look at some of these other features real quick in just a moment. So I'm gonna go to date and I'm gonna tell it, hey, I wanna see the age. Now I've, I haven't actually clicked this date only before, um, but you'll notice that what it does is it takes the date time. So it kind of goes back to our previous example. It just extracts the date from it as a new column. So that would be a way to kind of get around what we were talking about a moment ago as well. And so what I want to do is I want to select the age right here. But when I select the age and it adds that as a new column over here, it's going to look a little bit wonky, right? It looks a little bit weird, but notice the icon, right? Notice the icon. This icon right here is this duration, which is very interesting. So if I get myself out of the way here and I click on this, if you were to take this and divide it by, you know, 365 days, it would actually give you the number of years. So what it's doing is just getting the number of days that someone is old. This is how many days they are old. That's what it's doing. So up here at the top, you have a field called duration, right? And so if I click on this column and I click on duration, now I can tell it to return total years and that's it. That's how quick we can get it. And so it'll add that again, as a new column. Now we're not quite quite done because nah, most of the time you're not going to say, hey, how old are you? Well, I'm 57.9808 years old. You want to say I'm 57 years old, right? I'm not 58 until next week or in two days or whatever it is. And so we want to fix this. And so the way that I would normally fix this is you can either convert it directly to a whole number. If you convert it to a whole number, though, it'll round up. I don't want to do that. So what I can do is with the column still selected. Now this part's a little problematic because we're still under the add column section, which means it's adding new columns every time I do something, but that's okay. Um, to keep it simple, I'm just gonna come over here to rounding and I'm gonna tell I wanna round down, right? If you're 57.99 days old um, or 57.99 years, you're 57 years old. So I'm going to round down and now we get 57. It was 57.98 and now it's 57. That's super cool. It really is. Now I will say that you'll notice right here in the code, let's go back one step here where it says inserted total years. If you look at the ILM code, all it's doing is dividing it by 365. So as much as I do like this feature functionality, I don't entirely love that division. So you can play around with that a little bit yourself. You can change that number. You can make that number 365.25 if you want, knowing that there's a leap year every four years. But it is important to look at the Elm code that Power BI is writing. Now, one more thing I wanna point out, and then we'll be done with this example. If I go to the last step right here, inserted round down, 
which is where we get to our column right here, round down. Uh, there's a couple more things we can do. If I select this, let me just highlight a couple of key features. Under scientific, you can get absolute value. So if you had negatives and positives, you didn't want to spend the time trying to figure that out, you can just get absolute and it will remove the negative sign and just give you the absolute value. You can also get the power of, and you can do it squared or cubed, etc. You can get the square root of. You can do a couple of different things in here. Under standard, you can add to, you can multiply, you can subtract. You can also get the modulo, right? That is uh, effectively, for lack of better terms, like the remainder. You say, hey, I'm going to divide it by five. What's the remainder? So it would look at all these and get the remainder there. You can get, watch this, percentage of. Now, I do not recommend doing percentages in like a calculated column or a computed column like this, but it does give you the ability. So if this was like a line item, right? And you're looking at your sales table and you have the line item amount, but you have the transaction total amount, you could literally say percentage of, get this little pop-up right here. And you could say, oh, use values in a column. And then you could grab that total line item column that was repeated for every row. And now you can get the percentage of. Again, that's a static value. It's not gonna be as good as doing that back in DAX as a measure but there are times where you might want to do that, right? You might want to only, you might want to put certain items into buckets based on larger purchased items or, or ones that do certain things. So that is a capability, but be careful with that when you do it. And, and, and this is what I wanted to do in this series. I wanted to take a look at little features that are just not highlighted that maybe you didn't know about. So I hope this helped you out. I hope you learned something new. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Check us out at pragmaticworks.com and we'll see you in the next video.